Ladies and gentlemen, it is now 7 o'clock p.m. and a quorum of members is present, so the meeting of the Board of Education of the School District of New Berlin is called to order. Please call the roll. We can wait. Okay, we'll do it after the swear. Yeah. <laughs> swear again, sorry. <laughs> okay, so it's a little different tonight. Um, in recognition of the serious and important nature of our efforts here, we will join in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. For all who are able, please rise. And now for those who wish to prepare for the meeting, we will have a moment of silence. This is a public meeting of the Board of Education. Prior to this meeting, notice was given to the public last Friday by providing the agenda to the city library. The agenda was also posted on the city, on the district website. A copy of the agenda was forwarded to the Journal Sentinel, the Waukesha Freeman, and the Waukesha Now, all of which have filed requests for all public notices. We'll begin our meeting tonight with the oath of office. We have with us Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Rebecca Bradley. She will administer the oaths of office individually to newly elected board members, and they will sign the appropriate papers. We welcome Justice Bradley back to the School District of New Berlin to serve in this capacity. Justice Bradley was elected to the Supreme Court in 2016 after being appointed by Governor Scott Walker in 2015. Justice Bradley has served as District 1 Court of Appeals Judge and Milwaukee County Circuit Court Judge prior to serving on the Supreme Court. You may begin. Thank you. It's wonderful to be back with all of you. I missed all of you last year as we have been getting together, I think, for five years now. Uh, it's been a great honor for me to administer the oath of office to school board members here in New Berlin because I am part of a family that includes several generations of teachers, at least four now. Before I administer the oath to the newly elected school board members of New Berlin, I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate each of you, as well as your friends and your family members who undoubtedly played no small part in helping you win your offices. Thank you for answering the call to serve the people of Wisconsin. It is a great thing to hold yourself out to your fellow citizens in service and it is no small undertaking to run for office. It requires time, dedication, and some intestinal fortitude. It takes courage. As you undertake your responsibilities in these challenging times, I will leave you with two quotes to ponder. Those who know me know that I am fond of quoting Winston Churchill. He said, there is only one duty, only one safe course, and that is to try to be right and not to fear to do or say what you believe to be right. Have the courage of your well-informed convictions, whether they are grounded in your constitutional duties to your constituents, or whether they are motivated by your heartfelt beliefs in what is best for this great community in New Berlin. Churchill also said, all the greatest things are simple, and many can be expressed in a single word, freedom, justice, honor, duty, mercy, hope. As you undertake public office, whether this is your first term or your fourth, always remember to preserve freedom, act justly and with honor. Fulfill your constitutional duties to the good people of New Berlin. Show mercy, which in the context of elected office may mean opening ourselves to those with whom we may disagree strongly. And finally, never lose hope, something particularly important during our ongoing challenges. I would add one additional word to Sir Winston Churchill's list, and that is gratitude. I'm sure you are grateful for the opportunity to serve as an elected official in our great state. 
I am grateful for your service. God bless each of you, and congratulations on your election. Who wants to go first? Shall I go in alphabetical order? Please raise your right hand. Oh, I touched both pens, sorry. We'll be all right. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat <laughs> after me. I, Jeffrey Kurth. I, Jeffrey Kurth. Having been elected to the office of New Berlin School Board member. Have been elected to the office of school board member. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. But not yet, say it again. Have not yet entered. Have not yet entered. Upon the duties thereof. Upon the duties thereof. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duties. Of said office. Of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Right there? No, that's me. Sorry. Oh. No, that's you. That's you sure? Yeah, I haven't done this in two years, so. I haven't done it in three. <laughs> You're all set. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Ron Seidel. I, Ron Seidel. Having been elected to the office. Having been elected to the office. Of New Berlin School Board member. Of New Berlin School Board member. But have not yet entered. But have not yet entered. Upon the duties thereof. Upon the duties thereof. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution. And the Constitution. Of the State of Wisconsin. Of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge. And will faithfully discharge. The duties of said office. The duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Welcome. Um, Mr. Seidel, you can now come take your seat. And now we will take the roll. Ms. Crosby. Here. Mr. Helmer. Here. Mr. Kurth. Here. Ms. Schultz. Here. Mr. Seidel. Here. Ms. Unger. Here. Ms. Wondercheck. We will begin with the organization of the board. Since this is our first meeting uh, after swearing in of a new member, we uh, elect our officers to the board and we will begin with president. Uh, for all of these seats, I did ask for those who are interested in the position prior to um, this meeting tonight. And so each person who is interested in the position is listed on the ballot, and there is also a write-in space. And so um, everybody should have one for president, and you're just going to mark off or write in who you are voting for for president, and pass that then to Diana. And uh, this is a vote that is done uh, a secret ballot, which is the only time that our school board ever does vote by secret ballot.
Ms. Schultz is your president. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, so then I will continue on with this meeting since you have elected me uh, to remain as your president. Next, we'll be voting for vice president. And then board members, please again, write down your vote for um, board vice president or mark it off on your ballot and hand it towards Diana. And Mitch Helmer remains your vice president. Thank you. On to uh, voting for the clerk. Board members, again, write down or check off the person you are voting for board member, uh, for clerk member. And Jeffrey Kurth is your clerk. And finally, we will be voting for board treasurer. Again, mark off your ballot and pass it to Diana. And Ron Seidel is your treasurer. And then we have three other positions that are appointed by the president of the board. The first is the representative to CISA one. I would like to appoint Kate Unger to that position if you would kindly take that for us. Thank you. The second appointment is position is the liaison to the New Berlin City Council, and I would like to appoint Ron Seidel to that position for the upcoming term. Well, there you are. <laughs> okay, thank you. And finally, the third appointed position is our representative to uh, WASB, and I would like to appoint Chrislyn Wanderscheck to that position. You okay with that? Thank you. <laughs> now we're gonna move on to privilege of the floor. Meetings of the board are conducted for the purpose of carrying on the business of the schools and therefore are not public meetings, but meetings held in public. This portion of the meeting is an opportunity for you to come and voice your concerns to the board. So please do not be offended when we quietly listen. We may even take notes. We do not immediately respond to your questions and comments. This is a time for you to talk and us to listen. Thank you for coming to voice your comments and concerns. When I call your name, Please step up to the microphone, address the chair, and state your name and whether or not you are a resident in the school district. Each presentation is to be restricted to a maximum of three minutes. Privilege of the floor will be limited to one half hour. Presentations are not to be designed for purposes of engaging others in a debate in this forum. Discussion of certified, classified, or professional personnel or of individual Board of Education members should not be considered an appropriate topic for this forum and the speaker will be ruled out of order. Rebecca Leondowski would please come forward. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Leondowski. I live at 15335 West Mark Drive in New Berlin. I have two daughters, both at Eisenhower, and um, I'm a pharmacist. So what I want you to know about that is that my life my work is all about data, it's about science. Um, the school district has done an amazing job this year controlling the spread of COVID.
COVID in our schools and community. Your plan helped our students and staff stay safe and our schools to remain open. This was a huge team effort following the Waukesha Health Department, Wisconsin, and CDC guidelines. I know it's been difficult, but it was worth it to keep everyone safe. I'm here tonight to encourage you to keep masking and all other CDC guideline strategies to control the COVID through the end of the school year. We need to keep an eye on the end goal, to finish the 2021 school year open and safe, to finish with our class of 2021 seniors graduating in person, even if it is gonna be at West. <laughs> These students have missed so much in the last th 13 months, let's get them across the stage. Please continue to follow the science and follow the CDC guidelines, which still include masking and social distancing. Some of our students have been vaccinated, but with the 16 and 17 year olds only qualifying as of three weeks ago, the number vaccinated is still small. The vaccine is still not approved for students under the age of 16, so I know the percent of students vaccinated is still low. Please join the following Southeastern Wisconsin school districts in keeping your risk mitigation strategies in place until the end of the school year or when the CDC states otherwise. That includes the school district of Waukesha, Elmbrook, Menominee Falls, Milwaukee, Arrowhead, Greendale, Wauwatosa, Brown Deer, Whitefish Bay, as well as the WIA. I encourage you to continue to follow the science and the data that support masking to prevent such school-related outbreaks as in Michigan and in Dane County in a child care center. It's easy to find news articles and social media posts, hearsay from neighbors that fit any narrative. I work in oncology. You can find evidence that supports the use of all kinds of cancer-fighting foods or supplements. But when you're faced with cancer, you want to follow the science and studies and go with the NCC and approved treatments for the best chance at beating your disease. The same holds true for the schools beating COVID. Stay safe and stay open. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Allison Dietrich. Hi, Allison Dietrich. Um, I am a New Berlin resident. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate the newly elected and reelected board members. Second, I want to thank you all and give you so much credit for keeping our schools open throughout the pandemic. Because of the precautions in place, our schools did not have to shut down once, and that is something to be proud of. Let's continue to do the same things so we can continue to stay open. Now, this may be a little redundant, but the CDC updated their K-12 school operational strategy on April 23rd, 2021. The CDC continues to have recommendations for in-person learning. The school guidance for COVID-19 emphasizes key prevention strategies, including the use of masks, physical distancing, and contact tracing. As we all know, recommendations seemingly change daily. But with the CDC updating their website frequently, I ask that the board please follow the recommendations of the CDC for the remainder of the school year, <clears throat> summer school, and next year if needed. The Waukesha Health Department recently updated their school section of the website, stating that masks continue to be an important part of disease mitigation in a school setting. Until such a time that the majority of the community has immunity to the virus, it's really vitally important to continue following the steps outlined by the CDC to prevent the continued spread of COVID-19. The health department also reports that there continues to be emerging evidence from clinical and laboratory studies that show cloth face coverings reduce the spray of droplets when worn over the nose and mouth. Additionally, Children's Hospital of Wisconsin released a statement on April 20th <clears throat> calling for increased vigilance as COVID-19 cases increase in kids. The new and more infectious variants combined with the loosening of mitigation strategies are contributing to the increase in individuals under 18 years old. Children's Hospital suggests increased diligence in following public health measures, which include the recommendations I stated previously. This statement by Children's Hospital of Wisconsin is supported by UW Health, the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Wisconsin School of Medicine and Public Health, Wisconsin Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and the Wisconsin Medical Society. With the vaccine more readily available and the hopeful soon approval for children ages 12 to 15, we are getting so close to the finish line. 
of what has been a very long and difficult marathon. I ask again for the board to please follow the recommendations <clears throat> of the CDC. Please listen to the researchers, scientists, and doctors. We can't be looking at YouTube videos shared on Facebook or an article shared by some pseudoscience website. This cannot and should not be a political issue, especially when the health of our children and school staff is involved. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Jeanette Nowak. Jeanette Nowak, I am a New Berlin resident and New Berlin taxpayer. Um, congratulations to the two new board members who were voted in this past election, so congratulations. Um, I am here this evening because I want to address how important it is for students, staff, and all New Berlin community members to follow the mask guidelines. I respectfully request that the mask requirements stay in place for the rest, rest of the remaining 2020-2021 school year and for the summer programs, especially summer school. I ask that data from the health department and DPI be strongly followed when returning for the next school year. Right now, wearing a mask is essential for school to continue to remain open. It helps to slow the spread of COVID and helps protect people from possibly contracting it. So um, I have my daughter and she kind of wanted to share some of her thoughts as well. So Maple, do you want to share with everyone why it's important to wear a mask? Why is it important to wear a mask? Because it's a convenient to wear your mask so you don't spread germs. Yeah, you wear your mask so you don't spread germs. And do you wear a mask at school? Yeah. Um, do you wear your mask all day long? Yeah. Yeah. And does it bother you all day long? No. No. <laughs> so she's been wearing her mask for about nine hours a day ever since school started and before that during the, um, the previous summer. Uh, another point I wanted to address is that um, standardized testing. We are in standardized testing season. And right now, if the mask guidelines were to be lifted, there's a very high probability that many New Berlin parents will go virtual for the remainder of the year. This also means that the decision is even now easier for parents to opt out to take the standardized test. Opting out means parents are sure their students are not going into a building where masks are not mandatory which could increase the risk of contracting COVID-19 from unmasked students and staff. Why risk that possibility? We all know that school districts encourage students with parties and incentives to take the test. Why? Because our school districts need to have students to take the test in person so that their report card numbers can look good uh, for the district. If a student is virtual, you cannot test them virtually as there is no method put in place for them to do so. Keeping the mask requirement in place means less of a chance of a parent opting out of standardized testing. Also, um, having reduced the mask would be uh, increasing the teacher strain on having to teach virtually and in person simultaneously, and it is a very difficult task to do. Lastly, when I was looking at the data that is listed on the New Berlin School website for the COVID cases daily, it shows that both high schools have a higher rate of positive cases during the, ugh, during the current school year. And the data is there for the public to see and is showing that students across all the schools in the district have had positive cases. Every day it shows that there's a positive COVID case and that students are needing to be quarantined. I just respect, or I respectfully ask that the factual data from CDC, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, then we have Brenda Littler. Hi, uh, Brenda Littler, and I am a New Berlin resident as well. And sorry to be redundant, but I also wanted to talk about masking. Um, there's been some anti-masking activity brewing in Waukesha County. It's been a little crazy, and my husband and I are expecting our school district to follow the federal CDC guidelines and follow that science, even if our county decides not to. I don't think this is a political issue. I think this is about science and it's about its role in public safety. The school district of New Berlin was able to stay open for the 2021 school year due to masking and distancing protocol. It wasn't flawless. I spoke with some teachers who were frustrated with inconsistencies in masking and quarantining. 
And I know parents who saw evidence of COVID symptoms not being reported and COVID testing not happening so as to avoid affecting extracurriculars. But the vast majority of our student body cooperated and the year happened pretty safely. I do not believe that it would have happened this way without masking and distancing. I don't want to see our district now decide that we no longer have to follow the science just because of political opinion or pushback against the CDC and science. It's evidence from um, social media groups and posts um, that people still in our area are not understanding the basic science of masking. My mask keeps you safe from my expirations. Your mask keeps me safe from your expirations. To reiterate, when you wear a mask, you're keeping others safe, not just yourself. Therefore, inconsistent voluntary masking is not gonna provide the wide protection that our kids need. Um, I, I wanna reiterate that I think you need to follow the science. You can't make a decision based on your personal opinion or politics. The only fair option for everyone is to just follow what the federal CDC says. Um, I wanna make note that my son was virtual high school due to our 85 year old that lives with us, um, but he attended Milwaukee Youth Orchestra rehearsals two hours a week the entire year. They had very strict masking, distancing, temp taking, aggressive air scrubbing, and deep cleaning. My older son successfully navigated a year at UW-Madison, again, because of all their protocol, which young adults followed really well. We actually went to vis visit him about every two weeks, um, spent a ton of time on campus, and we saw the cooperation of the students firsthand. So please do not under, underestimate the importance of following the science in our past success in New Berlin. We want to be able to trust this district to follow the science going forward. Through the end of this year, through the end of this school year and into the next school year, assuming that could be a possibility. Let's get us all past the goal line successfully. Honestly, I would love to see my child in person next year. I would like to see what happened um, this year with protocol and what happened at MISO, what happened at UW-Madison. I'd like him to be able to be in person and have an 85 year old in my house and feel like I'm doing the right thing. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Chrissy Belsinger. Good evening. My name is Chrissy Balsiger. I'm an eight-year resident of New Berlin and a parent to three girls, a 2020 grad of New Berlin West, a first grader, and an incoming kindergartner this coming year. First, congratulations to the newly elected and re-elected board members. You are part of a group that we are all watching very closely and are all so hopeful that every single one of you put in the work and do so together by putting politics aside. A school board can't properly function if partisanship isn't put aside so the health, safety, and prosperity of our students and staff can remain at the forefront. In that spirit, it's critical that this board continue to recognize that wearing a mask isn't a political statement. Social distancing isn't a political statement. The risk mitigations that you and the schools have put into place to combat the spread of COVID are not political statements. They are guided by evidence, medical science, and expert opinion. I appreciate that to date, we've required masks be worn by students and staff in our schools. It is how we've kept our schools open, which I am truly grateful for. And my first grader is very grateful for. She'd wear a mask 24 hours a day if it meant she got to go to school safely uh, and know that she was, she was keeping her family safe as well. So from the bottom of my heart, from my family, thank you. With less than two months left of this school year, I'm asking that we stay the course. Please continue to follow the guidance of the World Health Organization and the CDC and the Wisconsin Department of Health and the Waukesha Public Health Department. Thank you all for your consideration. Thank you. Scott Yench. Scott Yench, I am a resident of New Berlin. I've been told by some of you that I too often offer critical comments and I don't say enough nice things. 
While I couldn't find any construction paper to make each of you gold stars, I would like to congratulate you for your efforts regarding keeping our students and staff safe in our schools during this year of COVID-19. I am a little bit redundant, but I would like to congratulate you. Our administration, staff, students, and their families have also worked hard to make all this possible, but it is your direction that is the foundation of this success. I encourage you to finish the job and maintain our success through the end of the school year, which is just weeks away. <clears throat> For the sake of everyone, including those that cannot or will not be vaccinated, let's keep wearing masks so that we can stay safe to stay open. Tonight, we're seeing the consequences of the April 6th election. The two candidates that received the most votes in that election have been sworn in to serve on the school board for the next three years. For the sake of the school district, I want them and all of you to succeed in your roles as our representatives to lead the district and its activities in all the official in the official school district organization chart, the superintendent oversees district administration staff, which oversees the staff members that serve our students. The superintendent reports to the school board, which in turn reports to the community. That last part is key. Let me repeat it. The superintendent reports to the school board, which in turn reports to the community. I encourage you to do everything you can to fulfill your important role in the school district. By running for your elected positions, you promise the community that you intend to serve to the best of your ability. By virtue of that promise, as well as the fact that we in the community pay for your salaries and the salaries of everyone in the district, I believe that it is critically important that you actively seek information from the community to do your jobs to the best of your ability, just as the superintendent seeks information from you in order to do his. Please be open to opportunities placed before you to increase community participation and encourage public input. It's not just a good idea to listen to the community, it's your job. I've been told by two different school board members that the community trusts you to make the right decisions and therefore you don't need to do these things. I respectfully disagree. If you trusted us and we trusted you, what need would there be for police officers at these meetings? Trust is earned and it can be lost more easily and more quickly than it was gained. It's not a goal to be reached, but an indicator of how things are going on a regular basis. To those that are being sworn in tonight and to all of you that sit before us, may you find strength by acknowledging the strengths of others. May you seek to understand more than to be understood. May you give more than you receive. May you listen more than you talk. And may you never lose sight of the fact that you answer, that you answer to the community in order to serve the students we place in your care. I look forward to seeing what we can do together. Thank you. Thank you. Up next is Ann Saflinski, and I'm so sorry if I keep mispronouncing your name. Hello everyone, Ann Shaflinski, New Berlin Eisenhower parent and resident. So thank you to all of the board members for all the hard work you have done and will do and the difficult decisions that you have made and will make on our behalf. Um, obviously, the entire community can't sit where you are. Um, so we do trust you to make all the good decisions that you can. And, and a lot of them have been extremely tough, especially this past year or two. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Um, I, too, I don't want to be too, too redundant. And I've actually struck through a lot of what I brought to say because other people have said it already. But I would also like to commend um, the board and the district staff for reopening with all the safety measures that you did, most especially the mask requirement, I thank you. And I also thank you for keeping politics out of the classroom, which people like to say that they want, following your strong guidance from the CDC and the Wisconsin DHS and the DPI and the Wa Waukesha Public Health Department. There's always room for science in our classrooms, right? So I noted that um, many, many of our peer districts have come out strongly in favor of keeping their mask mandate, um, regardless of what happens at the state level. So obviously New Berlin's in good company there, but education attorneys also state that the ability to create mask mandates lie with the local school board, which you took advantage of. And that liability for COVID infections falls on districts that ignore such clear guidance. So lawyers really don't see school mandates disappearing in mass until the CDC and DHS declare they're no longer necessary. 
I really can't imagine why anyone would consider dropping it in the last 32 days of the school year or longer um, until it's not needed anymore because masks are clearly needed just as much today as they were in January or last November or last September. I mean, it only, it only takes a look at the facts to see that COVID rates are as high in Wisconsin as they were last June, July, and August, and that Waukesha County continues to suffer with a lot of new cases per week, 70 to 80 per week just this month. CDC currently classifies Wa Waukesha County in the substantial transmission rate category. Also, only 46.2% of Waukesha County adults have been vaccinated to date. So I don't think why, why we should remove any key safety protocols that allow the district to stay safe and stay open. Districts that do that also must have to consider how teachers and staff will react. You know, will they face higher absenteeism in the final weeks of the school year? And would they be prepared for a sudden shift of students from in-person to virtual? They would need to give parents plenty of warning to make arrangements to their schedules to pull kids out of the classroom because many of them, like me, only agreed to send their kids back into the school building because of the mask mandate. So from what I can tell, the conditions that necessitated masks really have not changed. In fact, the public health institutions still strongly recommend them. So again, I thank you also for following the science to stay safe and stay open. Thank you. Up next is President's message, and I would just like to take this opportunity um, again to welcome our new board member, Mr. Seidel, and to congratulate both Mr. Seidel and Mr. Kurth on your election win, and uh, look forward to this year working with you. Then we have the administrative team report. First is sixth grade student representative update. Yes, I'd like to invite Principal Stepneski to come up and introduce the update being provided for Poplar Creek. Good evening, everyone. I just want to introduce our student video for you. So our, when we were here in the, in the first semester, our four students from uh, the PCTV crew that runs the, one of the groups that runs the morning show, I asked them about doing the second video and they said, we want to give an update on our seven years at Poplar Creek, uh, not just the last couple months. So once again, uh, this is their ideas, their questions, their responses, and their video. And so thank you for having us this evening. Good, Good evening, evening, school board. board. I'm Jelena. I'm Nora. I'm Spencer. I'm Stella. We want to give you an update on all of our seven years here at PC. What is your favorite school memory? Being all these awesome staff at the school. I was coming to school every day and seeing all my friends. Probably recess or outside gym. My favorite school memory is recess. What was your favorite school event? The carnival. I was probably in running around in the creek crawl in second grade. It was a basket raffle. Who are some of your favorite staff members? Mr. S, Ms. LaHaye, Mr. Warzak, and Ms. Shoemaker. Four was Ms. Mr. S, three was Ms. LaHaye, two was Ms. Wilson, and one was Ms. Bauman. Mr. S, Mr. Barzak, and Mrs. Mallinger. Mr. S, Ms. Smith, Mr. Barzak, and Ms. LaHaye. What was your favorite grade level and why? Sixth grade because we were able to go back to school and be in um, person. Third grade because it was like the middle of school where you got to the older group of kids. And I just had the most fun and one of my favorite teachers was there to teach me. What were your favorite things about being on PCTV? It was actually being behind the scenes and how it looks because I've been wondering what they do back there all the time when I was younger and now I finally get to see what they do. It was being on camera so all my friends could see me be a goofball. It's having a good start to my day and then just having fun with some of my friends. Was me and Nora's pop on routine? Could you show us right now? No. <laughs> what is your favorite day of the week and why? Friday, because it's 
because it's the last day before the weekend. Wednesday, because I get to go around saying, Hump day! Wednesday, because I have band, and Wednesday just goes by fast for me. Thursday, just because it's the best day of the week. If you were a school board member, what would you change about your education experience? My idea would be so that every once a week, any day, it would be a half day. So then the students can have a little break. I'd only change one thing. That would be to have school Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and have Tuesday and Thursday off. My thing I would want to change about school is probably a half day every day. I would have a half day every day. What are you most looking forward to at West next year? I will be excited to have my own locker at West and I will be excited to meet new staff members. Seeing some of my soccer teammates that are coming from Orchard Lane. I'm excited for West because I get to hang out with more of my friends from other sports and hang out with friends from here. I'm excited to go to West next year because I get my own locker. And what will you miss most about Poplar Creek? I would miss all the staff members here at the school. That's so nice. I would also miss all the staff members. The thing that I'll miss most about Poplar Creek is all the staff members. I'm going to miss all the staff members when I leave. Thank you, and that is Mr. S, the infamous Mr. S. So uh, next, uh, the next update for you is from Eisenhower, uh, and Nishi is here to present her update. Thank you. For an update relating to activities, Mr. Eisel and the Ike Band were featured in the past work with a virtual composer and creating an original song through a virtual ensemble of his in-person and at-home students. Mr. Kern virtually welcomed his 23rd guest this year to his employability class to discuss their career paths and their real world wisdom with his students. The guests were a collection of Ike alumni, New Berlin residents, and community partners. Guests represented interests ranging, ranging from an alumnus working at Google to a community member working in the finance field, so there was something for everyone. The new Berlin Eisenhower Rube team competed last week in the Wisconsin Regional 2021 Engineering Machine Design Contest. The team was tasked with creating a 15 to 20 step chain reaction machine. Driving change through transportation was this year's theme. The team took home two special awards, which were best technical writing of machine steps and most innovative step. Ike has 10 winners of NCWIT, which stands for the National Center of, for Women and Information Technology Award for Aspirations in Computing. The award honors women in grades 9 through 12 who are active and interested in computing and technology and encourages them to pursue their passions. Award for the I AIC recipients are chosen for their demonstrated interest and achievements in computing, proven leadership ability, academic performance, and plans for post-secondary education. Wisconsin Forward Testing and the ACT Aspire Test will be this Wednesday. These tests help teachers identify strengths and growth areas for students to help them improve in the years to come. DECA member Leila Kostasak is a finalist for the International DECA competition. Student Union held a blood drive last Friday and had a handful of teachers and students donate, as well as volunteer. NHS induction occurred right before spring break on March 31st to welcome new members into the chapter. Seniors are getting ready for their senior gala, which will be May 15th in the new Berlin West Fieldhouse. Lastly, spring sports started this week. Thank you. Thank you, Nishi. Thank you. I did have a question for you, Nishi. Uh, have you solidifi solidified your plans for next school year? And could you share that with the board, please? Yes, so next year I will be attending UW-Madison um, and, and majoring in information systems. Can you share a bit about some of the courses that you took while at Ike 
and how that's prepared you and uh, why you chose that major? Sure. Um, my junior year at Ike, I took an AP to AP Computer Science A course with Mr. Chamberlain, and I realized that I really liked coding. But at the same time, since um, ninth grade, I was part of a club called DECA, which is the business club. Um, and now I'm currently the president of that club, so I really liked um, business as well. So information systems is a major in the business school at UW-Madison, which is a combination of technology as well as business. So I realized it would be the perfect major for me. Congratulations on making that choice. I know that uh, part of our efforts is, is uh, f focusing on women in technology as part of our initiative uh, in the school district. I know Amy, uh, when she was president, you know, that was one of her passions uh, is, you know, getting women, um, you know, especially in the tech field and others as well. Um, and so, Nishi, I guess I'm, I'm glad to see. I'm very proud that, that uh, you'll be representing New Berlin as you move forward. So congratulations on that decision. And we look forward to hearing more from you as uh, you progress on your way moving on. Thank you. Uh, I, I too would also uh, pro provide my update. I'd like to congratulate Jeff and Ron as well. Ron, it's nice to have your wife and kids here uh, honoring you. Jeff, I think you've just done this too many times and so nobody's here for you. So, uh, but uh, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, I know Mr. Maxey and Tracy are here to support you as well. So again, congratulations, Ron, congratulations, Jeff. I, I um, do want to talk about uh, the what I had shared last uh, board meeting relative to COVID. And uh, what I will say, and again, I will reiterate this, uh, COVID and the restrictions around COVID are very divisive. And, and unfortunately, they are political uh, in nature. Um, and so, you know, yes, I, I would agree that uh, you know, we need to uh, consider the CDC recommendations. We need to consider what DPI and the state health department have to say. I think we need to consider uh, what the county health department has to say. What I will say though, is it did take courage. It took uh, uh, a lot of um, resolve on behalf of the board to make the decisions that they made last summer uh, to, open, to open our schools and have a virtual option. Uh, if we would have uh, simply relied on the CDC recommendations, the, the Department of Health recommendations, uh, we may not have been open. Um, and in fact, I, I uh, uh, you know, so the County Health Department took a lead that allowed us to open up schools last fall, unlike a lot of the state. You know, in fact, Milwaukee County, Dane County, they're just opening now and some of their schools still are, have yet to be opened. And so uh, I would agree with, with, with everything though. I mean, I think it's, it's a, a very delicate balance that needs to be taken. Um, but we, have, we now have data that we haven't had before. So for example, we have data that shows that a, a, only one student has trans, transmitted COVID while at school. 13% um, of our staff uh, uh, were infected with COVID. None were infected as a result of, uh, I, I, I take that back, only a small handful of those. And that was with teachers working in pro close proximity because of the nature of their work is why that happened. Um, we also now have data throughout the county that we are sharing with the Waukesha County Health Department. And while I can appreciate some of the things happening at the national level and even at the state level, we really need to focus on the county level and the data that in front of us here in New Berlin. Um, because again, should we have followed what some other, some of those recommendations, we may still not be open today. Uh, and so I, I uh, again, it's, it's this delicate balance. Now, again, I wanna share with you that our intent at this time, unless we get something significantly different from the county health department, is to continue with the precautions that we've had since the start of the school year. That would include the, the facial coverings, social distancing, uh, following the quarantining protocols that are set aside by the county, um, you know, the air, uh, air purification, encouraging hand washing, cohorting, 
uh, not gathering in large groups uh, because the stakes are high. I don't, I don't know exactly who mentioned it, but uh, I did share this at the last board meeting. We do have graduations coming up. And, and, and you know, I, I'm a parent of a senior, and, uh, you know, Janet and others also have, uh, Amy have kids that are seniors as well. And how, how, how bad would that be that, you know, we do something different and, you know, things go sideways and now kids can't even attend graduation. Um, you've got AP testing, ACT testing, which are high stakes for our students. Um, to have to do that possibly from home or while under quarantine could be problematic. We also have students that are involved in uh, co-curriculars this spring, whether it's activities or uh, athletics. Um, you know, so I do think we, we do need to, you know, again, at this time, based on the recommendation from the county, we do need to continue our efforts uh, would be my recommendation. What I will though like to say today is that our goal for the start of next school year is to, is to have less restrictions as it relates to some of these mitigation efforts. Um, I, I do think we need, you know, I think you, you need to remember that we've taken many efforts, not just one, so not just masking, uh, not just uh, social distancing, but a culmination of a lot of different things. And so, you know, we will be working with the county throughout the summer so that we can get to that point of starting next school year with less restrictions. Now, what, what most of us, or at least I shared with the county uh, in my weekly meeting, where it's actually every other week now, but because this is a topic of conversation, we actually now have a weekly meeting again with the county uh, to talk about this because it's, it's critical as we plan for next fall. And so what I shared with them was I didn't think it would be appropriate for us to, to rip the Band-Aid off come the start of next school year. Things have to happen prior to that in order for us to get there, learn from it, and, and determine, again, is this something that we should or shouldn't be doing, uh, you know, and, and do that this summer if we can. Um, again, I, uh, I, you know, as of right now, we are offering, we will be offering a virtual option, uh, 712, and we are currently considering a virtual option for K-6. Now, as uh, I think I talked to Kate about this, yes, we will be uh, uh, surveying families. Uh, we will be surveying, you know, K-6 families to find out how many people would be interested. Um, and I do think, though, that we need to let the, the and inform uh, our parents and students that our goal would be to reduce those restrictions come next fall. Therefore, that would inform their decision of whether they would or would not have their kid attend in person or virtually. Uh, so again, I do think we need to clarify that our goal will be to start next school year with less mitigation efforts. Again, we will work with the county over the summer to help us inform what we will be doing next fall. Uh, but again, unless something significant changes at either the national, state, particularly at the county level, we would encourage that we continue with the current mitigation precautions at this time. I, um, I do think though that, uh, again, we, we, we have to, you know, part of the issue with the CDC and the state and the DPI is in my opinion, they are lagging. They are lagging because they're just trying to get kids back in school in some cases. And so therefore those of us like uh, the, the K-12 public schools in Waukesha County who have been out ahead of this thing, you know, they're not keeping up with us and that's unfortunate. Now, what I will say is we are getting more data. We are getting more research uh, available to us. Uh, I did talk to the county health department uh, head, Ben Jones, and did ask him like, what's the research coming back from like Florida or Texas who have gone away with mask mandates? Uh, Ohio, I believe also did some, some things. And um, quite honestly, it's still a work in progress. So again, I don't wanna get too far ahead of ourselves but at the same time, I think we need to be preparing for to get back to a sense of normalcy as we as we start next school year. Uh, and then again, I'd like to see uh, some of those uh, things uh, at least explored over the summer to inform how we will open up next fall. Uh, so with that, I guess that that is my update at this time. 
Are there any questions? Well, I do. I have some questions. So, I mean, you sort of brought up that the goal is to reduce restrictions start fall. I know we've had some emails from parents. One of them was calling for an actual action plan, and she actually wanted us to put this on the next agenda. Do you sort of have an idea of a timeline? Like, what, what should our next steps be as far as starting to set up, okay, here, here's how we know we're going to make some changes? So, you know, in, in conversations with the county health department last week and the county uh, executive, uh, this has all uh, been thrust upon us at this time. You know, so once the, the mask mandate from the governor was overturned in court, these conversations are now that much more prevalent. Uh, and they understand where we are at because, you know, we are getting, you know, kind of both sides providing their, you know, keep the mask, don't keep the masks. Uh, keep the social distancing, don't keep the social, you know, so you're getting all, all of this. And that's, again, I believe somebody did mention that is what's happening throughout Waukesha County, not just here. Um, I, I think we need to unfortunately just be patient for now. Um, our goal would be to at least introduce some of these adjustments we'll be looking to make. Kelly, uh, when is the first uh, day of summer school? It's the week right after um, graduation. So, you know, time is of the essence because that is when, you know, things w would likely happen. Um, and and I know that we are, uh, I think we're a couple, three, four weeks away from, you know, unfortunately being able to, again, you know, uh, we need to work with the county health department. And uh, unfortunately, you know, again, I think, you know, they supported us in our efforts to reopen schools in the fall. Uh, I believe they're willing to work with us to determine how best we can transition to uh, less mitigation efforts come the opening or next fall. And what that looks like is to be determined, but I do know that we are starting to narrow that conversation. You know, so again, some of the things that we're talking about are uh, masking. You know, are we gonna continue with the masking, making it optional for students and staff? Uh, testing to inform quarantine, which is something that we're not using currently. So for example, if I uh, ended up being a close contact because say, Kate had COVID and I was within the six feet for 15 minutes or more, um, I automatically have to quarantine for seven to 10 days. If, I, if, if we did some testing of me, for example, that came back as a negative test, could I now do away with the quarantine so that I can get in school, which is where we want the kids. Um, you know, so that's another example of using data, using testing to drive decisions like quarantines, because quite honestly, quarantine are the biggest, uh, is the biggest issue in my opinion, because we don't have kids in school, which is where they need to be. And so how will we be informed of that? Um, also the vaccine rollout, is something that we are, um, you know, so, so I know somebody mentioned a statistic that there's less than 50% of the population in Waukesha County have been vaccinated, but it's actually closer to almost 70% of those eligible uh, to be vaccinated. Um, so the numbers are getting up there. Uh, and certainly, yes, you've got kids that are now being vaccinated, but also research does show that kids don't, uh, you know, it's not a, a fatal situation in, in most cases. So in the majority of cases, quite honestly. Um, and so, you know, what does that all mean? So, and, and that has, you know, if you think about the vaccine, I, I think about, what was it, two and a half months ago? You know, I was sitting here like, our teachers finally get vaccinated. So much has changed since then. And it's gonna continue to change that quickly as we move forward. So there's, a, unfortunately, there's a lot of moving parts. It's extremely complicated, but again, our goal is to make sure that we get, you know, yes, we want to get to the end of the school year, but then we also want to take that next step as well. Uh, Janet, did that answer your question? I know it was a long way sort to get of. to it. <laughs> and it, it just sounds like, like, I think your answer pretty much is we're not there yet for an action plan. We still need more information. Correct. Before it's time that we could start laying out an action plan for making changes going forward. I think what, we, what, what I would feel comfortable with is I would, bring forth a, a plan. And again, when you say action plan, uh, I, I would just say a plan of, okay. of what we're going to do. 
uh, with all these different layers, similar to when we, you know, the school reopening, it was like all this stuff, right? Um, is that I would feel comfortable bringing you something at the second meeting in May, not the first meeting in May, but the second meeting in May. And uh, I would bring a recommendation to the board. If we needed to have a special meeting between then and the first meeting in June, then so be it. Uh, or, uh, or I'm sorry, the, did I say the second meeting in June? The first meeting in June. Um, and then that way we can have at least a couple meetings, uh, you know, underneath us. We'll have talked about it, shared what we're going to be doing differently. And if the board wants to take a vote, they can take a vote to determine how we move forward with at least summer school. Does that give us enough time before summer school starts? Because that's only two meetings before summer school, I think, right? Correct. I mean, I, that's why I would almost, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't think I'm going to have enough by May 10th is my, is the, the issue. Uh, just just based on my conversations with the county last week, again, we're working on it, but there's a lot that needs to be, you know, d further discussed. Uh, the county is analyzing our district data, not just us, but Waukesha County School District data points to determine what they can do uh, to consider moving away from, you know, again, if the state and the, and the national CDC are lagging, you know, where, where is the, where's the county going to put their nickel down? to support our efforts moving forward. So uh, again, I, um, I, I just don't think I would have anything tangible by May 10, unfortunately. We, we could. Just, I, would there be any value in moving our first meeting in June up to help? Or would, is it, yes. Or, okay. I mean, that's could, either that or you have a special meeting just to discuss or, that. Topic. Okay, yeah. My concern, I just don't want to all of a sudden the week before summer school starts, right. we're making all these changes. Yeah, or... Yeah, we need to give parents enough time to know. I mean, e even quite honestly, Janet and Mitch, even if I had until the week after May 10, so May 17, which is the week before that second meeting in May, that extra week would be huge. Should mm -hmm. we just pull the next meeting up? Can we do that? We could do a quick... We could even do a virtual meeting if it's just one. this topic. I just I want to make sure that we're cognizant or we're giving you the time to be able mm -hmm. to make those decisions, but we're also being. Yeah, I will know a lot more come Wednesday. Okay, with well, my weekly check in with the county health department. If everybody's okay with that, if once we hear some more information, I'll let you know if we need to schedule another meeting. But it would not be May 10th. Okay. All right. Gosh, I thought of something else. Um, Oh, so um, just to address this, because we're getting a lot of questions from, well, from some of the emails is, you know, if it's a recommendation, why are we making it a requirement? Can you sort of clarify why we are making it a requirement, even though it's not required necessarily by the- Well, quite honestly, the CDC also doesn't require anything either, mm -hmm. nor the state health department. They are recommendations. Um, but at the same time, as I shared with the board at the last meeting, we are educators. And we have to entrust in our local health department to support us in how we move forward. That local health department for us is the Waukesha County Health Department. Uh, other, other municipalities do have a local health department uh, to inform them of that. So it makes it a bit more complicated because now uh, for most of us, at least throughout Waukesha County, uh, the county is our, all of our health departments. So now they have to take into account not just the data from just the school district of New Berlin, but that of the entire county. Where like, for example, I believe like Greendale has their own or Franklin has their own, where they could rely on their own data and make decisions for themselves. Uh, our setup, it's, it's a little bit more broad with the entire county. Um, and yes, I mean, certainly some school districts have done away with, uh, you know, not many, uh, but some have done away with, with the masking requirement. Um, but again, it, based off of what the county is telling us at this time, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing anything different, at least through the end of the school year. Unless, again, something dramatically changes between now and then. I have a, quest, a couple of questions in relation to athletics. So the outdoor limit, I believe, was, was um, rescinded by the Waukesha County. So are we allowing full spectator capacity now at any of our spring and going into the summer? Yeah, just event? because the just because of uh, you know we've pro you know projected out that uh, you know first first of all we've asked people to to socially distance, bring a lawn chair or stand uh, if you can't socially distance within the 
uh, within the stands. Um, so we've got plenty of space, you know, uh, th you know, throughout, you know, for baseball, softball, soccer, you know, there, there may be some issues, but uh, we don't anticipate just based on, unless you have like an Ike West game, and then it's just a matter of please distance. We're recommending that people wear masks outside. Uh, we're not requiring it. Okay. Uh, and, rec you know, recommending that, um, that certainly if, if you can't social distance that you have a mask on. Well, you asked, you answered my second question was whether or not we're requiring masks outside during these sporting events. So it's just recommended if somebody wants to. Now, I do want to clarify that the WIAA d does come out with certain standards for the athletes, okay. which are different. That was so, my next question. <laughs> yep. So, so WIAA, for example, in baseball uh, and softball, um, because kids are in dugouts and may not be able to socially distance, uh, they're recommendation and are we are requiring our students and our coaches to wear masks uh, if they can't socially distance in those dugouts um, and so uh, same thing with like soccer if you're on the sideline and you can spread out socially distance you don't need to have a mask but if you're in that little like it's raining in those little glass whatever you call those mm -hmm. things I wasn't a soccer guy so uh, if you have to stay behind those or underneath those then you should probably have a mask on if you're not social, you can't socially distance. So um, again, think it's a bit different because things are outside. We don't have any indoor. Mm -hmm. uh, now, for example, if we have a musical, we still are restricting audiences because that would be indoors. Mm -hmm. um, so th does that answer that? That, that answered that. And, and um, what about like recess for, for the younger kids? Are they able to take their masks off? or do they need to keep them on during recess now? That's something that we're talking with the county health department about as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, now, and again, you know, you're still talking about map testing. You're still talking about getting through to the rest of the, uh, to the rest of the school year. That's what we've consistently done. Now, again, we've done a good job of allowing mask breaks for our students if they wanted them and, and an area if they chose to go uh, and take that mask break the entire recess that they could kind of go wherever that you know in certain areas uh, throughout throughout the the playground or the fields that they could go to so that they wouldn't actually have to wear a mask. So again, as long as they're, I mean, I, I guess our standard has been, if you need to take a break or you don't want to have a mask, you you need to keep yourself away from from those other students. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm hearing that there might be um, some new information released, possibly even by the CDC, that they're going to start saying you don't need masks outside. So um, once that happens, would we make that just our school policy that if you're outside, you don't need a mask? Yeah, on? So, what tip, well, tip, so what would typically happen is the CDC, uh, in that case, uh, it gets to the, you know, again, sometimes there is politics, unfortunately, where the CDC makes that, and then it could be like a week or two lag when our state, the uh, Department of Health mm -hmm. finally gets to it, which then eventually gets to the county. Mm -hmm. So the county could, could take an aggressive approach and just say, yes, we're gonna follow the CDC guidelines. And then that would drive our, you know, mm -hmm. our decision-making, which again, if that was the recommendation, I would encourage us to move away if we could. And going to graduation. So I know that they're gonna be required for our graduations for both visitors and the students. Um, you had mentioned to me that the students will be able to have their masks off when they get their diploma and their pictures. Yes, they will have the option to do that if they feel comfortable doing that. Okay. Uh, everyone else, uh, you know, now maybe, again, like you saw Justice Bradley here as a speaker, uh, we, we're still considering what we're going to do there. Um, but that would be the only limitation, as well as our graduates when they're walking across the stage, receiving their diploma and walking off the stage. And then a lot of people gather outside afterwards. How about then? Are we going to be wanting them to have masks on or is that up to the people themselves? Just like we're doing for spring athletics, mm -hmm. uh, we will encourage encourage uh, families to do that. But I mean, there's no, there's no way that we can enforce it with that many people there. Uh, but you know, again, just we encourage if you can. But in some cases, quite honestly, if, if you're socially distanced outside and you're with your group, I don't know why you mm -hmm. wouldn't. I mean, you're outside and you're socially distanced. So, uh, if they can do if they can do that, that would be great. Will we do a year end survey to get the pulse on parents uh, as far as thoughts on fall and what their thoughts are on masks and any other mitigation? Or yeah, I mean, I think I think uh, that might be a good idea since 
we only hear from a few. We get emails, we get a few here. It might be good to get more information. We'll consider uh, determining how and when we would do that. You know, we don't want to over survey people, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we do want to kind of get a pulse of where people are. I just, you know, I, you know, what, what I always encourage, if you know, don't ask if you don't want, if you don't want to uh, uh, move forward with at least what's being what's what's being asked. Uh, well, you know, maybe we once we have like sort of a plan, a tentative plan in place, get feedback on how do how do parents feel about this plan based on what's being recommended by health experts and what us school board members feel comfortable with and then yeah i mean i think parent. what we would do is uh, quite honestly just ask you know now that these this is what our this is what we're looking to do next fall and the summer does that change your mm -hmm. uh, whether you would be in, in person or virtual okay you know rather than i mean you know, because do we ask about social distance? Do we ask about, you know, I mean, and again, we have to just be careful too, because, you know, you ask, and let's say 90% of the people still want masks, yet the, the county's telling us you don't need them. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know? mm. um, so, uh, you know, it, well, at it just, some point, do, do the people get to decide? You know, that's, that's the issue. One of the issues I know I'm hearing is what happened to personal responsibility, personal freedom, and I mean, I know that that's part of the issue, too. Okay. All right. Does anybody so I guess, Kelly, well, let's, uh, we'll talk about, because again, we, you know, what we could do is in this, uh, the same survey, we were going to ask at least elementary families, you know, like if, you know, what would your choice be if these were or if they weren't? Anybody have any other questions? Okay, sorry, then we'll move on to district reports. And we have the donation report. Um, Mr. Seidel, do you happen to have that report up? Would you like to read it for us? Casio. I did also want to add that um, we had over 80 plus donors uh, give donations to our Give Education Day. Thank you all very much for your donations. Uh, we did receive a significant donation um, and uh, we will be thanking uh, those individuals privately uh, as we move forward. Um, but, th you know, thank you all. And again, we raised over 
$5,000 for our staff uh, to enhance our staff appreciation week efforts. Um, and certainly look forward to, to that. And again, thank you all very much, those 80 plus donors. And again, those of you that independently gave as well uh, to it uh, as well. Thank you. Thank you to all the, all of our don donors. Then we have the consent agenda. Are there any items that should be pulled out for separate consideration? Yes, I'd like to pull out some financial reports. Yes, please. So I think we need a motion. Um, I don't think we do. No, okay. Not under reports. Uh, okay, so we used to go over these um, items in the finance committee meeting. We did not have a finance committee meeting this month. So Patrick, I apologize in advance for not giving you advance notice because I didn't have a forum to do that. Um, and if you don't know the answers to any of these questions, I will be happy to send you a follow-up email where you can answer them via email and then I can report back to the board at our next meeting. So these are my questions. Um, in the March 4 check run, I'll tell you, these are all from the March 4 check run until I get to the next one. The Apple incorporated payment for $11,820. I believe that's an installment payment to Apple to support the iPads at the K through six level. Do you know how often those ins that installment is made? And if the answer is no, I will add that to the list. I'll have to check with Brandon. Very good. Uh, from I'll put that on the list. Uh, class link for $15,500. Chris, I think we, what we would prefer is uh, just not to put Patrick on the spot. Could we just? Could you just email those to us, and I'll be happy to provide those in a in a board update. Yeah, I could do that. I just want to make sure that I get them as part of the record since we don't have a finance committee meeting on this check run. We have that for every other one, but we didn't have one in April um, because that was canceled. So I thought um, we agreed at the last meeting that we would email them to Patrick, they would be in the public record for this meeting and we'd get answers back to you. Is that, does that fit your needs for that? Um, I think that I, I just wanna make sure that it appears in the minutes from some meeting, whether it's a finance committee meeting or this public meeting. I mean, the finance committee meeting is also a public meeting if we have, if that's resurrected um, at the next work session, then that would be an appropriate place to have it. I just think that it needs to be part of the public record because that's why these checks are reviewed. I had a conversation with Amy Crosby several weeks ago where we both agreed that nobody was ever looking at these reports until we started the finance committee. So we need to continue that inquiry. So I'm, I'm happy to email Patrick the list. Um, I just didn't think I had a forum to do it prior to this meeting because we didn't have the finance committee in place. But it I think should I'm okay with if you were to say um, which ones you would like more information for, and then we can come back to it at our next meeting so that it's in the record. Okay. He, you might not be able to answer it right now, but. Well, that's just so the we process know. that we had set up in the finance committee meeting. And if I didn't get the notification early enough, then that's exactly what I would do is I would answer those questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, after the meeting. Sure. And at our next meeting, we are going to have a work session on, on committees and we're going to figure it all out as a group how we're gonna go forward with the finance. So since that's not a regular meeting, then- No, it'll be a regular meeting. It's during our regular meeting. We're gonna have a work uh, session right part of our regular um, board the, meeting, next one. But is it, is it a business meeting? I thought it was just a work session. No, it it's, gonna be, it's gonna be a full meeting. Okay. And it's just, we're going to work into it um, a work session. So what it does is it relaxes the Robert's rules. Sure. We don't have to use Robert's rules. Sure, so at that meeting, if we could ensure that there was an item to dispense with the March questions, because we'll have a whole nother round of them mm -hmm. at the second meeting in the other, in the next meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we could do that, that would be helpful. Sure, we could hold off on putting that on our, our work session and then we will work out how we'll do it going forward. Okay, then I'll put together an email for you, Patrick, based on all of my questions. And shall I, I, I think I need to copy the whole board on them because it's part of the whole board's um, information. Sure, then what we'll, I'm we could, why don't you, you could give it to me and Diana and we'll have it in the packet then for our next meeting and it'll be part of our work section packet. Okay, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will do that. Um, and then we'll get answers on each of those things at that following meeting. And I'd, I'd like to go over them. I don't wanna just have it be communication from Patrick 
to us mm -hmm. and then not have it be said at the meeting. I think it needs to be said at the meeting. Right, whether it's going to be this meeting sure. or however we do right. our committee meetings, it'll be, it'll, they'll be addressed right. going forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, so then do we have a motion for the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. And a second? Second. I have a motion by Mr. Kurth and a second by Mr. Helmer to approve the consent agenda as presented. Any further discussion? Yeah, I was looking at the enrollment and it looked like we are up 11 students in the past month. And I know I always kind of catch this once in a while. We seem to have some swings in there. Is there anything behind that or is that just normal fluctuations that we? As of now, um, you know, we, we actually, um, we've been analyzing this uh, on, a, on a monthly basis. And so obviously we were quite low uh, as we started the school year. We had a, 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 an increase during the third Friday count in January. And we've actually seen a small uptick uh, since then as well. Um, as of right now, we can't necessarily say what it's, what it's specifically driven toward uh, other than, um, than just general influx. Uh, we, we certainly will know more as we analyze the data throughout the, the entire school year. Also, you know, we do have, you know, families that are inquiring about coming back next fall uh, face to face and or those that chose uh, like a homeschool option that want to come back um, as well. So I, I think we're uh, again, this pandemic has just kind of driven this thing, you know, haywire. And it's really tough to uh, specify exactly, you know, why, because there are so many factors as a result of that pandemic, you know, people losing jobs, so no longer able to send kids to private schools or people moving, um, you know, so again, right now we're, we're looking at that. Uh, what I will say is uh, there is legislation being proposed uh, related to uh, the impact that, that the, the COVID-19 pandemic has had on school districts with enrollment. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, enrollment throughout the state of Wisconsin uh, significantly dropped as a result of the pandemic. Um, and so they are looking at possibly uh, utilizing uh, or, or ac actually eliminating the, uh, the, the membership count to that of pre-pandemic as opposed to what happened during the year uh, so that it wouldn't have this significant negative impact on our funding. Uh, again, that's, uh, that's being legislated as we speak. Nothing has been solidified. Um, I do know that we do have a pretty big graduating class uh, that will be exiting with some smaller class sizes coming in at the elementary. And so that's really going to be a big X factor is, uh, you know, you never really know how many kindergartners you're going to have. You're going to project it. Obviously, we did do that report uh, with that, uh, that outfit from Madison uh, that, that showed slight increases. Obviously, that was pre-pandemic. Um, but again, uh, yes, Mitch, very, very observant of you because that is what we are experiencing. Joe, could you, that legislation that you're talking about, that they're talking about altering the, it's the three-year rolling average, right, that we always have that determines enroll, our funding. So do you know how they're talking about accommodating that? Are they talking about just eliminating that data year or what are they? They would, they would uh, use the... Uh, the year previous to uh, the current school year, or I'm sorry, yeah, the the data for the the, num the membership number from not the current year but the previous school year okay. would would be the it would be just kind of rolled forward so that we, we wouldn't see like for example I think it was uh, was it minus 133 Patrick for membership? I thought it was 130 or so. Yeah. Yes. So it, you know we wouldn't see that impact in that second. That second year would maintain right. similar to the previous year. Right. Okay. So they're talking about eliminating that data year is what they're talking about. And again, it's the start of a conversation. So who knows where yeah. it will land? Do you know who's proposed the legislation? It might be more information than you know, but I'm sorry. I do you know I, which which uh, legislator has proposed the legislation? I don't recall, but I can certainly send something to the board related to that. Okay. I'm just curious. Thank you. Any other discussion? Just in, in, con, in relation to that proposed legislation, um, it is something that we do have to look much more in depth to 
because it's not just um, moving the uh, three-year rolling average back to the 1920 school year, but that also could have an impact on um, hold harmless um, provisions for for the the uh, enrollment uh, decline so again it's one of those things where we have to dig into that the, the legislation needs to be looked at carefully because there are um, downsides that have to be considered before we just say yeah it, we're, we're going to go back to that number so it could be a one-year um, solution with several years of downsides in the future. So we just wanna make sure that we're looking through the legislation carefully and completely for all of the, the issues that could arise from it. Like any good politician would say, the devil's in the details. Oh, indeed. So when you can, if you can get the proposed legislation to us, like the actual legislation it, as it's printed, so we can review it to see what those additional consequences would be because we don't want a quick fix that's going to deliver other problems. And of course, we're not the legislature, so we can't vote on it, but we can communicate our position as a board and as a district to those legislators if we have the legislation in our hands and we can actually review it. Do you have uh, candid conversations that are ongoing with our local representatives? Right, right. Well, yeah, I know you do. So, but I think that'll be an important thing for us to be informed about what we're talking about, whether we're in favor of it or not. So. Anything else? We have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, raise your right hand. Motion passes. On to our regular agenda. First, we have discuss approved policy 7530, lending of district owned equipment, replacing current policy 3524, non instructional operations. Can I have a motion to approve as presented? I move that we approve the policy as presented. And since this was brought forward by, was this the finance? It was, yes. Then we don't need a second. Any discussion? there's no discussion then all those in favor raise your right hand all those opposed motion passes then we have discuss approved policy 7250 commemoration of school facilities replacing the current policy 3170 naming of schools facilities and properties now this one we have a recommendation to table it for now yes yeah, so this was brought forth by the finance committee and um you know, I, I, there were a couple things, you know, I, you know, and I know that you'll be talking about committees moving forward, but, uh, you know, one of the questions would be, you know, why this wasn't brought forth through the facilities committee. Uh, and so that's kind of where things get a little sticky is, you know, who, who, which committee is for, for what? Uh, and so, you know, A, we don't feel comfortable uh, making a recommendation since that committee, and again, if that still stands, have it, them at least review it as well. Uh, First of all, second of all, we are in the process of actually uh, solidifying our naming rights and sponsorships for the school district. As you are aware, the, um, the budget balancing task force uh, made uh, a recommendation to that. Uh, we did share information with the board related to how we would move, move forward. So one of the things that we're doing is uh, we're enhancing our um, ability to centralize our facilities rentals. And, and so that, and again, that actual person will start next week, Patrick, or did they start today? Started today. They started today. So that's, uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, but we also are in process of solidifying and putting a lot more meat on the bones of what we're doing for sponsorships of school facilities. And so as we are going through that, we want to make sure that we are not, uh, again, we're asking you to table it so that we are being consistent but we wanna be able to bring you forward of the plan and proposal before we make a policy change. And while I do know that the policy is very broad and generic, there are some intricacies that I believe will need to be clarified uh, in our planning that uh, again, I don't wanna miss, you know, have the board make this approval tonight 
and then we bring forth something and then you know now we're talking about uh you know you know a contradiction between the policy and our recommendation before we even bring that to you uh, so again that is why we are recommending that the board table this until at least further notice um, our, our goal is to have some more details here to you at least in the next couple months Michelle, right. the point of order, we need a motion to discuss it. So I move that we approve the proposed policy as presented. Okay, so I have a motion by uh, Ms. Wondrachek, and since it was originally bought, brought forth by the Finance Committee, we don't need a second. So any discussion? Shall we table it? What are your thoughts? Um, my, I did have a question about, it was, there was noted in the agenda, um, Joe, that you would be recommending that we table it while we solidify plans for sponsorship naming rights moving forward. So then I went back to the um, commercial advertising and sponsorship sponsorships policy, which was 9700.1, which we approved back in 2020. Um, and so I was wondering why we were moving to tweak that again. And the added thing I wanted to throw in is the reason that this was discussed under the finance committee is because again, like some other policies that don't seem to be entirely financial in nature, it was lumped under that category when we started our work back in 2019. And that's why we considered it, whether it was a facility, you know, facilities. All, the problem is, is there's with these policies, there is an awful lot of crossover in, you know, how, because you're talking about in this, you know, policy, Naming of schools, facilities, and properties, commemoration, that has to do with our property. Property has to do with our money. And it also has to do with facilities. So there's, you know, there's crossover, right? So that's one of the reasons why, that's the primary reason was that it fell under the auspices of finance when we took over and when I started the finance committee. Um, but the question as to why are we, I didn't know that we were revisiting the sponsorship when we had already hashed that out last year because that was a pretty recent change. Without all the detail. Pardon me? It was hashed out, but without all the detail. Okay, so oh, so, you, so you're so you looking to like expand on that policy and try to provide more and detail. And it wouldn't be so much the policy, it would just be the, the our administering it and, and the, okay. the rollout of it all, uh, and not necessarily in policy. Uh, but again, you know, there are some things that, you know, we are looking at, at uh, and, we don't want to have it be in conflict with this proposed uh, policy. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I just, quite frankly, I mean, I thought that this policy was pretty, we used the NEOLA policy, which was very generic um, and is two paragraphs. So I thought it wouldn't be that, you know, significant. But if you think that it's going to conflict with something that we do, I'd definitely be interested to hear how that would occur. And again, we would bring that to you uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, and then, the, you know, we would then at that point ask the board for their feedback on our proposed plan, as well as then maybe even updating the specific policy so that they are aligned. So I'd like to make an official motion to table this so we can move on to the next topic. I have a motion uh, to table. I'm sorry. Point of order. There's no second required to in motion to table. It's not. I'm sorry. There is a second required, but it's not debatable. Right. I know it's not debatable. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Know. Yes. So we have a motion by Mr. Helmer, a second by Mr. Kurth, and so the item is tabled. Um, all those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed, motion passes. Then we have uh, future meetings and dates. Board meetings are generally held the second and fourth Mondays, beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Eisenhower Commons, unless noted otherwise. May 10th, we have a regular meeting, which will include a work session. We're going to focus on committees and policies going forward. Uh, and then another regular board meeting on May 24th. And we are continuing to have a health questionnaire required upon entering the building by all staff and visitors. Commons capacity is limited to 25 visitors and face masks are required per district policy. Please observe social distancing. Um, for tonight, we're doing our closed session at the end. So now we're going to have a roll call to adjourn to closed session. Um, I would entertain a motion to adjourn to closed session. I'm sorry, Michelle, I have a question about yes. the future meetings and dates. On the agenda, it says that we're meeting in the New Berlin West Commons, unless noted otherwise. Oh, my ad. That's okay. Right. I figured I figured that was just a mistake. Oh, I thought that had been changed on. The but I just <laughs> want to make sure that I wasn't yes. in the wrong place next time. No. 
Yep. So that's okay. I just want to, if you could, and maybe Diana, if you could change it on the agenda so that if somebody looks back at this agenda that they don't see the wrong place. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Thank you. Thanks for catching that. Yeah. I move to adjourn into closed session pursuant to section 19.851C, E, and F of the Wisconsin statutes to consider C, the employment, promotion, compensation, and performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the Board of Education has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting of other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. And F, financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons, preliminary considerations of specific personnel problems, or the investigation of charges against specific persons, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data, or involved in such problems or investigations. Board will discuss and possibly take action on A, the approval of closed session minutes of April 12th, B, performance, employment performance and compensation matters pertaining to staff. Amen. Second. So I have a motion by Mr. Kurth and a second by Mr. Helmer. Please call the roll. Mr. Kurth. Yes. Mr. Helmer. Yes. Ms. Crosby. Yes. Ms. Schulz. Yes. Mr. Seidel. Yes. Ms. Unger. Yes. Ms. Wondercheck. Yes. We are moving into closed session and we will return to open session if we have any action items to be uh, voted on and to adjourn. Thank you.
is now 845 and we've returned from closed session. Please call the roll. Ms. Crosby? Here. Mr. Helmer? Here. Mr. Kurth? Here. Ms. Schultz? Here. Mr. Seidel? Here. Ms. Unger? Here. Ms. Wondercheck? First up, actually only item up really, is action on items from closed session. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve employment performance and compensation matters pertaining to staff as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Helmer, second by Mr. Kurth. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All those opposed? Motion passes. Last item is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No move. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Kurth and a second by Mr. Helmer. Any discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes. Good night, and thank you, everybody. <laughs>